My name is Davin Sturdivant, and this AIM Learn Fast video is about how to compare two laps in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So, you know, when I look at my session data, there's always that lap that's got that one section of track that I can't quite get right. And I know there will be the one lap where I just got it dead on and then every other lap, it's just the tenth that I miss from my best time. You know, is there a way to kind of compare two laps together so I can see when I'm really nailing it when I did well and just try to see like where that is and maybe what I can do to get that better lap time? Certainly. And they, uh, and we'll open up this practice here, this practice test in a second and take a look at a couple laps and, and, and start to figure out ways to do that. But one of the things that um, you is, you have an advantage. You're the driver and the data guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I'm looking at data, sometimes I don't know that feeling and that it's turn six that the, you know, the driver has been struggling with unless they tell mm -hmm. me, right? And then, and then, so I've always, I, I just wanted to share that uh, when you are the driver, and the data guy, there, there's this thing, you know, that, that looking for that needle in a haystack, right? right. And and uh, and if somebody just sends me a, a data file like this was sent to me, I have to go look, at, find those areas first. So we're gonna we're gonna attack this from two different ways. One of them that you know there's a there's an area that you might want to look at, and then the other one is is just well, what is a tool to for me just to look at two laps and say where is the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's attack this from two different ways. So so I've got this SEMA practice test. Let's go ahead and open it and then let's look at a look at a couple of laps the the aim software always opens up the fastest lap that yeah that that's just by default that's the way that we open up the the, the sample and then uh so w once we're there we've got this one lap uh, lap six being the fastest lap of the run at a 101.73 and then we've got this 101.9 there's two tenths difference between these two laps right so um what i'm going to do is, is i'm just going to activate lap seven there's two different ways you, you the, the Typically, we would do that. Number one, you can come over to the to the laps tab, and you can simply just put a, a checkbox in uh, in lap number seven. Or the uh, the shortcut, kind of quicker way that I have found myself doing is you can click anywhere in this uh, in the test laps toolbar on top of lap seven, or even come right up to the little checkbox there and and uh, and activate that lap as well. So so now what we've done is is I always tend to just start with speed traces and you know keep it down to the to the what happened right you know speed is is one of the money channels it's uh you know if you if you look at your speed and your lap times that those are the two things that I'm always studying and in this particular case where we want to compare two laps no reason to have all that other data up there yet it's valuable data it's it's really telling me in the end will tell me why the speed has gone up or down but but to begin with just to study this data we bring the two laps up we make one red one blue and then we look at it, right? And uh, so then we just, uh, where, where was the difference? You as a driver, as soon as you come off the track, you would download this. You would look at, uh, you know, this this corner right here and say, well, that boy on this one, this on lap six, I was I was super quick through this area, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a very quick way to get to that point, you know, versus lap seven in this in this case because I picked it because it was you know fairly close. But the uh, the the uh, the other way to do this, if I if if the driver just gave it to me and the driver is still drinking a glass of water, trying to recover from the from the session and 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 get his mind straight to help me look at some things, I look at the at the time compare bar. Right. Time compare bar in in the AIM software is when it automatically shows up when you have two laps and uh, when you when, when you open up a second lap and th what it does is it takes your fastest of your two laps remember the red lap was a, a 101.7 and the the blue lap was a 101.9 so the red was two tenths quicker it makes a flat line of your fastest lap mm. and then the other lap or, or other laps we could we could throw even more up there but the 
it, they are being compared against it. If you're below the red you know, horizontal line, you are faster. Mm-hmm. It, it, if you're above it, you are slower. Mm-hmm. Where Right where you cross over, right here is 0.0, right? Mm-hmm. And wherever you cross over, you end up, that is where, say, like your Nintendo racing games and you're, you're ghosting, you're racing against your ghost car, right? Mm-hmm. That is right when you are at the same spot on the track at the same exact time. Mm-hmm. And that's the same way on these two laps. So in this particular case, if we... It, these two lines are always at the same spot at the start line because they you we, we zero them out right sure. it, when you cross the start finish line of course you're at the no lap is ahead of the other you're, you're starting out even so in this particular case the, as the blue driver was driving along on this blue lap you know if we come down to here right about in this area here we click the the blue lap was 0.122 seconds ahead mm-hmm of the red lap at that spot, it's below it, right? And then there was this big little, uh, big little, there was this little uh, rise in the blue trace where it lost some time, mm-hmm. right? And so, so you'd want to go back and look at it and we, what happened, where, you know, where did it happen? Why did it happen, right? But the, the time compare bar is, is a great tool that if you, especially if you weren't the driver, you can pick up the, very quickly where the differences are on the lap time. So basically what you're saying is I'm awesome when I'm below the red line and I start making excuses yeah. above the red line. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, that, that, that's your, that's your well, job. Yeah, right? Exactly, right? Because when I'm drinking that water, I'm trying to figure out when I got there, what can I say so that they, <laughs> I can blame this on someone else? I'm sure there's a squirrel or something there. That, uh, that's what. It, but the data doesn't no, lie. I know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and I, I find that the time compare bar is also really uh, encouraging for me sometimes when I'm trying to see um, where there's maybe some ultimate time left over before getting into any of like the reports or anything more complicated. I can always say like, oh, well, you know, if I was carrying a 10th up until the point where it switched over, I know there's at least a 10th left over. At, at least a 10th left over. Right? Exactly. And it, and it, it is such a quick tool that it is literally where my eyes go first when I bring up a second lap. If we're looking at, at speed kind of things, vehicle performance, driver performance kind of things, I look there first immediately, and I look for the largest change. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you know, certainly this might be one, and th- this is another one, right? And uh, and then you, as soon as you see this down here, then immediately you slide up and you go, oh well, yeah. Look, under braking, you know, we just finished the the what happened, right? You were slower. The the red the blue lap was slower in this area. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, where? Oh well, look at this. The initial part of the braking. Certainly, the acceleration, the, the end of the straightaway speed was very, very close. The first part of the braking was good. Something happened right here. We, we would want to dig into it, right? And uh, to, to understand first what happened, where did it happen, and then why. Yeah. And then, but it's under braking, and then shoot, this whole area here uh, w- was just quicker. And it looks big because of the scale is, is, is not so big. But you know, we're talking um, you know 1.6 miles per hour right where the cursor's at, right. right? So it's it's not a ton, but it's a uh, it's enough that it captures really quickly. So uh, I study the the time compare bar is is a valuable tool. You can look visually and you can see some of these other areas and you can start to study. Look at the braking on this on this zone here, right? The braking was pretty even, and then right here something happened. Where the where the red red driver really wowed it down here at the end and then got back on the throttle earlier and it really helped on the way out. Okay, so so why he made some time he lost some time coming in he made some time coming out and the time compare bar shows that as well. So you uh, the time compare bar will should be your first tool to take a look at and then zoom right up to the up to the to the speed trace and then that's the what happened, the where, the braking, acceleration, wherever it happened. And then the why, of course, we start adding some other channels to understand the why piece, right? But um, just wanted to talk about uh, ways to bring up a second lap in this particular uh, instance and then and then uh, you know and then study the the time compare bar a couple things just be, be, before we uh, start to close it out the time compare bar if it does not show up there's a uh, it does not show up if you do not have a speed sensor so if it, in this case with with micron 5s we have gps speed so the, you know, that piece is not uh, it is hardly ever lost the other thing that I, I get the call sometimes and there's no speed trace and uh, I, i'm sorry no time compare bar and if you have the uh, x-axis in the time mode you know where where across the the bottom here on the x-axis is zero five seconds ten seconds you will not get the time bar so 
the, the, the time compare bar. The most times I get phone calls from folks and emails, I, my time compare bar is not there. You know, I, I chat to them about this time distance bar across the t icon across the top. And when they go back to distance mode, that's where the time compare bar shows. So, so that's uh, one of the biggest times that uh, people don't see it is because they, uh, they, uh, they have that in the wrong so mode. So make sure you're always in distance mode is what you're saying. Uh, uh, 99% least... of the time I'm in distance mode and it's just a much more consistent way to look at data anyway. And the time compare bar works. So that's a good thing. That's the end of this AIM Learn Fast video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want us to cover another topic. Visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about Micron products.